school systems trying to force the state to change the way it helps fund education. Leandro challenged the, the Leandro money will got help to be Leandro comply. Leandro's fight for the cuts violate students' constitutional rights to a sound basic education as defined by the Leandro case. Of how the Leandro ruling could have been as the Leandro case Leandro issues. He hopes the Leandro money will help retain. You've heard the name for 27 years in North Carolina. Schools meet the Leandro requirement of providing in the Leandro case. The Leandro case, that case. But what is the Leandro case? Leandro is an opportunity to equal the playing field. An opportunity for us to fix things. So all kids can have the same opportunities other kids have. And why should you care? The most meaningful constitutional case in the history of the state. You ready? I'm ready. I'm WRAL investigative documentary reporter Kristen Severance. And how many kids? We traveled all over the state. Let's talk about Leandro. And interviewed dozens of people to answer those questions. Leandro is what? Resources. A sound basic education. The school systems that filed the lawsuit. Leandro is a landmark education case. The lawsuit was filed in 1994 by five poor school districts who said their students weren't getting a sufficient education compared to students in wealthier counties. I'm getting sick of this. It's still going on, and it impacts every county in the state. Feels like political games. That's nearly 30 years of rulings, appeals, and arguments. If we don't have the funds to get them ready, how are they gonna be successful in life? But I have to ask, doesn't that take money? Sure, it takes money, but whatever the money we're paying now ain't working, is The people who often say it's not about money are the people who have money. While everyone fights about Leandro and what's happening in the courtroom... We don't need to have judges assuming that sort of authority. This is first grade. I wanted to find out what's happening in classrooms across the state. If so many kids are coming out of schools unable to read at grade level, what is that going to mean for society? We're saying that they're less than, that we can throw them away. This is Leandro, the case for a sound, basic education. This is Aurelian Springs Institute of Global Learning in Littleton, North Carolina. The elementary school is about 70 miles from Raleigh in rural Halifax County, one of the five original counties who sued the state. We're 732 square miles. Many of our kids have to ride the bus 90 minutes each morning to and from school. There are less than 200 pre-K through fifth graders here. 99% of them qualify for free and reduced lunch. I want to take a little tour of the building. Their principal, Marcus Jones, used to walk these same halls as a student. It feels good because I'm home. When Jones first started as the principal six years ago, Aurelian Springs was deemed a failing school by the state. Jones changed school culture by getting teachers and families to see he was committed. I'm vested here, and the parents understand that and they see that. The elementary school's report card is now a C. Jones is proud of a lot at the elementary school, like their dual Spanish immersion program. But for some parents, what the school has isn't enough. So right now we're in a kindergarten area. One of the first things I noticed on our tour, the small class sizes in kindergarten. Those small class sizes aren't because Halifax can afford to hire more teachers. It's because parents are choosing to send their kids to charter schools instead of Aurelian Springs. Jones asks every parent why. Because the number one thing they talk about is field trips, these major field trips that are going on. It's not about academics, it's not about the safety of the schools, it's just about what they can do as far as exposure. And how does that feel? It's heartbreaking, to be honest with you, it's heartbreaking because we're doing great things in Halifax County. He said area charter schools can afford field trips and other programs his school can't. They have more enhancement classes. They, they're able to offer Spanish, band, music, all of that. Here we're only able to offer PE, and that's it for our students. All right, ready to go. And it's no surprise, the only elective offered at the school is what the students we interviewed love most about their day. What is your favorite thing that you get to do at this school? I like PE. I like that we get to exercise. I like the physical activities and it's fun. What is your favorite thing at school? PE. 
You ready? We can't compete because we can only offer them the bare minimum. That's to give them the best instruction that we can possibly give with the funds that we have. Educators tell me counties like Halifax aren't fighting for extras. In some ways, they're still fighting for basics. So currently we're in the Media Center. The Media Center, which is also the library, had some books on display that were more than 30 years old, back when West Germany still existed and was separated from East Germany by the Berlin Wall. We don't have a lot of resources like the other counties do in the big cities. First grade teacher Connie Wheeler said they don't have the money to hire enough teaching assistants so students can get one-on-one -on -one support something they really need since COVID. I know I'm a first grade teacher, but sometimes I have to go down to kindergarten and pre-K level just to get my kids back where they were, where they need to be now. I feel like we need assistance to assist the teacher in working with these kids to provide them with more intervention. Everybody good? Second grade teacher Pauletta Brodnax spends half her day as a second grade teacher and half as a coach for other teachers. If the school had the money, they'd hire someone else to do one of those jobs. And when you have so many roles, it's hard to really focus on one job and really do it well. That's the only enhancement. And Jones said the district doesn't have the funds for needed positions in every school. Right now, we have to share the counselor. We have to share the social worker and the nurse. I get them maybe two days out of the, the week. Students are dealing with a lot of mental, social issues, experiencing death. We need those individuals here to help them. What is she doing? They say these are issues many public schools in counties with more money just don't have to deal with. By law, the state is supposed to fund education in North Carolina. The counties can levy property taxes to raise additional funds for education. And some counties can give a lot more to their school systems than others based on their tax base. Halifax County School District gets $2,240 per student, while a more wealthy district, Chapel Hill Carborough, gets $7,228 per student. According to the National Educators Association, North Carolina spends $11,385 per student, ranking us 37th out of 50 states. We're doing the best we can with the limited resources that we have. Are we getting there? Dr. Eric Cunningham has been in charge of Halifax County Schools for six years. This is the toughest job I ever loved. The waves here are something that I've never encountered before in my 30 years of experience. He calls the problems in Halifax waves, things like generational poverty for his families. He says more money equals more resources, which equals a better education for students. It's money that I need to flow through Halifax on a reoccurring basis because our kids matter. These concerns continue well after elementary school. We spent a day at Northwest Collegiate and Technical Academy, morning, one of two high schools in the Halifax County School District. Good morning, sir. Steve Hunter is principal. How does it feel ultimately to be a principal at a place you went to school? It's a powerful feeling. Uh, it's a unique feeling. Hunter graduated from Northwest in 1987. When he became principal here four years ago, it was a failing school. Mr. Uka. Biology teacher Richard Uka started around that same time period. Say hello. We stopped by unannounced, so he's not wearing a microphone. What do you think of the school? It has made milestones in terms of improvement. I mean, I've looked at the history of this school, but when I came here, they used to call it the Wild Wild West, if I'm right. Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, yes. Yes. Yeah, well, how you doing, man? Hunter said his well, first goal was to bring down the physical altercations happening at school that were leading to suspensions. So if kids are on campus, they're able to learn more. With Hunter at the helm, the graduation rate at Northwest has gone from 70 to 83%. They've gone from a D to a C rating. If this poor Title I school in Eastern North Carolina is a C school, imagine if we have the extra millions based on the tax base that we don't have. If we had it, what could we do? Just imagine. Hunter can't afford to hire a Spanish teacher, which means the kids at Aurelian Springs, two miles away, learning Spanish from pre-K to second grade, can't continue it in high school. I'm asking for things that, that we should have. And with Leandro, it's possible if the monies come to us. The fight for funding and resources in counties like Halifax has been going on since at least 1994, when five counties sued the state in a lawsuit named Leandro versus the state of North Carolina. 
Give me your first and last name, please. Uh, my name is Rob Leandro. So you are actually a person. I am actually a real person. I'm <laughs> not just a case. Coming up, hear from the man whose name is literally the lawsuit. It's always been a fight. I mean, we had to go through the courts for a reason. The school pretty much looks the same. As a Hope County student in the 90s, Rob Leandro knew his school didn't have as much as schools in other districts. As a 14 year old, I, you know, it's funny, like where I saw it was sports. So like I would go play games in other places and say like, well, they have a weight room and a field house and a New Jersey's and we're wearing the same thing the team wore 20 years ago. <laughs> and I wasn't in other classrooms at the time. So I, I kind of assumed it was normal for us to run out of copy paper halfway through the year or to use books that were 15 or 20 years old. He was in eighth grade when the superintendent asked him and his parents if they wanted to join a lawsuit against the state of North Carolina. And we felt like it was important and we wanted to be a part of it. These five counties sued the state, saying they couldn't afford to provide an adequate education to their students. Several students were named in the suit, but Leandro's name was listed first. This was the spring of 1994. So people thought we were suing to get more money for the school. And I think what we were trying to show was, our students aren't doing as well. We don't have the same resources. Can you see the dial? Leandro said they didn't have a science lab, so they had to watch kids in Chapel Hill do their labs on a closed circuit TV. We kind of thought the case would be decided. Maybe by my senior year, all these resources would maybe come in if we won, and then it'd be great. Rob Leandro is now a 42-year-old lawyer with kids of his own. A judge in the Leandro case. The Leandro plaintiffs. Twenty-seven-year-old lawsuit for nearly three decades, thirty years, and many court rulings later. The case is still going on. Many blame politics. Well, a quarter century later, here we are. Rick Glazier is a former member of the Cumberland County Board of Education, former member of the House of Representatives, and now runs the NC Justice Center. He said everything happening when the suit was filed is happening now. And that seems to me to be an unconscionable circumstance and a legacy none of us want to continue. Leandro has been going on for so long, but here are some key dates. Leandro was filed in 1994. In 1997, the state Supreme Court ruled every child in North Carolina has a right to a sound, basic education. A right guaranteed by the state constitution in 1868. And we put it into the constitution of the state, unlike almost any other state in the country. In 2004, the court said the state was failing to provide that sound, basic education. According to the court, a sound, basic education means schools with competent, certified teachers, schools with a competent, well-trained principal, and resources necessary to support effective instructional programs. Because something's wrong in that classroom. He's Judge wrong. Howard Manning said these three things are what Leandro is all about. So this is for every child. Doesn't matter what color you are, how poor you are, where you came from, and where you live. Ain't no excuse. You got to be Leandro compliant. Judge Manning oversaw the case from 1997 until 2016. He spent most of that time calling out school districts with low test scores. This is not a money case. Manning always said this was an educational achievement case. It was not about funding. That's what Leandro is. There's no word in there about money. He said kids still aren't getting a sound, basic education. So fixing this, would you say it, it takes bold action? It takes something big? You no, know, it takes somebody in the classroom who's Leandro compliant. That's what it takes. But I have to ask, doesn't that take money? Sure, it takes money. But whatever the money we're paying now ain't working. It's, it's, it proves itself. The people who often say it's not about money are the people who have money. That's a lot of money, folks. Glazier says Manning was right about a lot during his time on the bench. He looked deeply at the student outcome data. He looked deeply at the inputs into what was causing uh, reduced outcomes. But Glazier said schools can't be Leandro compliant without the money for resources. 
You don't get the best teachers unless you enhance pay. Money mattered tremendously in wanting to get those things accomplished. And I think that was the disconnect. You know, these are the biggest fights when it comes to Leandro. Where that funding fits in and who can order whom to pay up. We need to have high standards. In 2016, Judge Manning retired and Judge David Lee was assigned the case. Our schools, in 2017, our Governor Roy Cooper created a commission to get Leandro figured out. In 2018, the court appointed an outside party, a company named West Ed, to study the entire situation and recommend specific actions the state needed to do to comply with Leandro. West Ed interviewed 1,500 people over two years and found students were worse off now than in the 90s. There's been a determination by the best finance study in the country that North Carolina for 25 years has operated an unconstitutional system. West Ed's report said fixing this would take sweeping changes and $8 billion over eight years. The report laid out a plan on how to spend that money to overhaul the system. The real end result of this report became what's known as the seven Leandro tenants and what the state needed to do to have these seven things in every school. High quality teachers, high quality principals, equitable funding, an assessment system, support for low performing schools, early childhood education, and ensuring that all students are ready after graduation see us move along with this plan. And in November of 2021, Judge Lee ordered the state to pay for the first two years of the plan by transferring $1.7 billion from the general fund. For all children across the state of North Carolina. Advocates called this a long overdue victory, saying the funding could fix issues in schools in nearly every county in the state. How did you feel when Judge Lee ordered the money? Oh, it was like excitement. Finally, yeah, this may happen. Others called it a complete overreach, and they have no plans to comply with Judge Lee's order. Quite frankly, the precedent that uh, is being set by this court is a very dangerous precedent for our system of government. Senate President Phil Berger says Judge Lee has no right to order the legislature to spend a dollar. That power belongs to lawmakers. I mean, I don't know Judge Lee, but he, in my opinion, clearly does not understand our system of government. Berger said not all kids are getting a sound basic education. I don't think there's any question about that. The real question is, what's the remedy? What is the appropriate thing? And how is that decided? Berger doesn't agree with the premise of the West Ed report, pointing out it was partly paid for by education nonprofits. He's also against the plan's price tag. The idea that more money is always the answer is pretty predictable from these so-called experts because that's always their solution. We are Berger's solution to school problems is that parents should get to choose where their kids go to school, and that includes private schools. Families who can't afford it can apply for opportunity scholarships, but Republicans admit that won't help all kids. Do you not want to give money to these schools? Or do you not want to be told by a judge that you have to do it? No. Um, so if, if the question is whether or not we have made decisions to fund these schools, then uh, all you have to do is look at the budget that we have adopted. The state passed a budget at the end of 2021. $760 million went for things specifically listed in the Leandro plan, like teacher salary increases. Another 100 million went for things like teacher and administrator salary supplements. I've never seen a budget pass with the kind of numbers that we saw in the House and the Senate. But Glazier said that still falls short of Judge Lee's order of $1.7 billion to fund the Leandro plan. Funded about 50% of the first two years, which is sort of half compliance. We don't let litigants just sort of say, well, I'll comply with the part of the judgment I want and I won't comply with the part of the judgment I don't want. Judge Lee's order was immediately sent to the Court of Appeals, which ruled Judge Lee had no authority to order that money be spent. The case is headed to the state Supreme Court. And how the court rules may depend on who is in charge. Right now, it's a four to three Democratic-led bench. 
but two seats are on the ballot in 2022. If one Republican is elected, it becomes a Republican-led state Supreme Court. If the Constitution says that the state needs to provide a sound basic education for students, and everyone agrees that that is not happening for all students, who is supposed to force the state to do that duty? Well, the people in voting, if the people are looking at that and have decided that the legislature is not doing an appropriate job in connection with that, we have an election every two years. I think the last thing we want is an appointed judge, not elected, appointed, making those kinds of decisions where there's really no oversight by the voters. We must and have to do better by students in this state. And if you're not willing to do that, you should remove yourself from office. Like, we have to think larger than, oh, this is too much, or this judge shouldn't tell us what to do. Coming up, back to the schools still fighting to provide that sound, basic education. Watch this and many more award-winning documentaries anytime. Go to WRALdocumentaries.com or stream it from any of these platforms. Back in the Halifax County School District, the work continues. Why did you let us go into two of your schools? Well, because I wanted you to see for yourself what we're doing in spite of and how we are committed to being with the children no matter how strong the waves are. Dr. Eric Cunningham knows the district has a rocky past. In 2009, Judge Manning called what was happening there, quote, academic genocide because of low test scores on statewide tests. The district is no longer on the state's list of low-performing schools, but Cunningham worries they've gone as far as they can with the money they have. There are people who adamantly believe you can still do great things without money, that this is not about funding. Like, what do you say to that? Hmm. Everything boils down to money. You get what you pay for. And what we just want people to see is that we can do even more with just a little bit more. Yeah just a little bit more. We're so close. Please do not portray us as a destitute school, a school system, because we're not. The district has allowed us to, to bring in, to maintain wonderful teachers on this campus. We have a principal who cares. The only thing we don't have are the resources that other more affluent school systems have. I don't particularly care that this plan that they're talking about costs $5 billion. I care that they've actually, for the first time, sat down and come up with a plan that's going to cost something. And I'm hopeful that everybody will sort of say, we need to do something big. If it goes to the Supreme Court and they say, no, you have to fund this, you have to fund Leandro, what will you do? Well, we'll have to see if that happens. Leandro? is opportunity for all students to be successful because it will open doors that we can't open right now. You have to have adequate resources in order for doors to open and Leandro will allow us to do so.